and um, uh, engineering is my background. And um, I kind of grew up in the R&D side uh, in pilot scale. So that's where, you know, my, my formative years, let's call it, were. And uh, I just had a lot of fun there. And uh, in doing so, you know, um, you know, I started out on the on the research end, right, just doing experiments. But in doing so, I realized like, oh, I want to be able to like build myself a playground, so to speak. Uh, and so um, uh, I got more involved in that aspect. And, and of course, you know, as you grow, things get bigger, right? And so it, it started with pilot facilities into manufacturing facilities. And, and it's just super exciting and fun to do, um, especially for me in this, you know, uh, area industry global food movement right because the the technologies are so exciting and yeah I, i'm like a little kid in the candy store every time i get to to work on this stuff because it's like ooh, what do i get to play with next um so yeah i, I want to talk to you today um really about kind of like how do we get from these ideas you know that were shared before into the nuts and bolts of it right and so um uh, let me take you, you know, briefly to our to our goals, right? We want to get from some some plan. Somebody gives us this, you know, overarching objective that says, "All right, we think this is a good idea." You know, what do we actually do about it? And then at the end, um, I'll give a couple of examples um, just to to show you how I think about uh, think about it. So with that, um, let's start. Uh, basically, um, this this this. The, the reason why I drew this one is to show you that um, quite often we won't have, you know, a super clearly defined objective, right? There'll be some very broad goals uh, that will be handed to us. And so um, in, in trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to even start, uh, I kind of take this approach where I look from the top down and I look from the bottom up. Right. And and somewhere in the middle, and that's why I tried to use a little bit of a, a fuzzy filter on this. There, there's some answer in the middle there. Right. And, and of course, as more constraints are added on, right, as time goes on in the project, that answer starts to crystallize. Right. And, and, and then, you know, far down the line, you can imagine, right, you have the construction crews actually building things that you've designed, right? So this is kind of the, uh, the the method that I choose to do. And it's a little bit of a mixture of both. So I'm gonna start with the top down, kind of give you the highlights there, and then I'll, I'll do some of the bottom up. And, and like I said, we'll end with some of the examples. All right, so uh, let's start here. What, what are some of the high level inputs? Um, and, and Garrett shared a lot of them, right, in, in his presentation there. But if I had to kind of put them into, you know, big buckets so that I can think about it, right, in order for us to kind of de develop our strategy, right, how we want to tackle this, uh, we have to look at a few key areas. Um, so the first one, um, and I'll just start, you know, kind of the upper left and, and, and do clockwise, is, is regulations, right? Um, if if many of you can can recall, you know, 15, 20 years ago, right? Um, uh, things were 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 not even as um, amenable to these new products that we want to put on the marketplace as they are today, right? Uh, what is plant based, and, and even today, what is cell based, right? And what is what is precision fermentation, right? And all of these things, and, and as we know, in, in many. Uh, uh, areas of the world, um, uh, regulatory is often pretty slow to catch up to that. Um, federal, much less state and and local, right? Um, and and of course, food products and food safety are, are paramount, right? Um, you often have to to go through, you know, the the local, right? Your your county um, health departments first, uh, right? On your journey up to being able to sell products, uh, you know, nationwide or even globally. And so this is a, a really key um, a bucket to focus on. Um, I have some, you know, direct experience right now as I'm working in the cell cultured industry where the regulatory component is huge, right? Um, before, you know, we even start to commit and, and often it's like tens of millions of dollars into, into these facilities, right? We, we do want to know if the governments are going to be amenable to us, you know, doing these things. 
And so, uh, in my opinion, it's it's really critical to to get somebody um, you know that has an understanding of of how the the rules and regulations work and where they may go. Um, somebody or some buddies, right? Maybe it's a firm that that has you know uh, connections and and and, and relationships um, into the policy making, so that um, you know the uh, they can hear sort of the industry perspective and and and, and take our input uh, right in order to craft policies that work for everybody. Uh, number two was kind of uh, one you heard probably from Andrew's talk, right? I initiatives. Um, uh, if the if the environment <laughs> is is conducive to it, right? There may be a lot of um, uh, help right outside, whether it's government, whether it's university, whether it's industry, right? Um, there's going to be pushes, uh, right? And that's going to help move this uh, along a little bit faster. And that's tied very closely to current events, right? Um, uh, I think, you know, just a couple months ago, right, with COP26, highlighting a lot of things that many people uh, around the world are thinking about and, and are, are now at the forefront of their minds, right? And, and this area uh, uh, of us, for us, all protein is, is really critical to that. Um, and, and of course, you know, uh, those people will mobilize, right? Um, and so you'll get a whole bunch of, of interested stakeholders that, that you want on your side. And uh, sometimes they will also be very influential for market conditions, right? The ebb and flow of market conditions. Uh, and then, of course, our last one, right? Technologies that's going to enable the whole thing. So I, I know I kind of glossed over those last few because I feel like we're closer to those on a day-to-day -day basis, so we don't have to spend too much time on those. But uh, keep in mind that that these are all really important to uh, to to putting into your strategy because if you miss one of these groups, right, uh, uh, it, it could cause problems for you down the line. All right, so with with the strategy that we're going to start, you know, developing, um, how do we actually do it? So uh, I like to think of this as my little, you know, staircase <laughs> to the uh, to 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 the plan, and uh, we'll start there at the bottom with with uh, definition, right? So the definition, um, as with anything, is you have to uh, really, you know, define the project. What is the project? What is its scope? What is it trying to accomplish, right? What is it not trying to accomplish, right? This is very important, especially when you think about it at, 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 at the factory level, right? Because it's like, what are the inputs going to be and what are the outputs going to be? So, so you really have to make sure that the definition is really tightly defined, right? Um, and this is something, uh, as we know, right? Um, even if you're doing something like, you know, remodeling your kitchen, right? <laughs> you really need to know exactly what it is you want to do because, uh, you know, mission creep, so to speak, always occurs, right? Cost overrun always occurs, you know, um, even, even time overrun, right? And so um, you have to be adequately prepared for that. And I think the best ways is, is being able to define something um, uh, very, very uh, clearly. Um, so uh, a slightly more refined version of that is the purpose, right? What are the success factors? How are they going to be weighted? What are your risk factors? How are you going to rank everything, right? These are these are these are very key, right? And and I often um, uh, tell people that. Um, you know, the, the manufacturing mindset at the end of the day is geared towards efficiency, right? And so what it is, is you want to make sure that all the inputs that you take in are going to be turning into sellable outputs, right? And so um, usually that means, you know, specialization, right? And so, you know, we can look at some uh, analogous industries, right? Like the automotive and, and you've probably seen like they make, you know, factories where they make one or two, maybe three different types of, of cars or trucks uh, there, right? And that's it. Uh, because too much diversity, right? Um, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a master of none, right? When you have too much there. So the purpose is very key to dial that in and make sure you know, you know, what you want out of this. Uh, the next step on top of that is going to be functions, right? And this is where you start to get into more of that uh, detailed um, aspects, right? Those bullet points on, on your document. Um, and so functions are kind of like, what are the unit operations that must occur inside this facility, right? Um, what already exists 
um, that you can pull from somewhere. What's going to be new? What do you need to modify? You know, what kind of safety factors uh, are required in order for you to achieve your goals, right? Here's where we really talk about kind of the things that we want accomplished from number two, right? So if you're if you're making um, alt dairy for for instance, and um, it's going to be beverages, right? You're probably going to be thinking about um, you know, what kind of, of actual uh, sellable units they are, right? Are they like individual units? Are they family size units, right? Are they bulk pack for a food service, right? Uh, and what are the kind of uh, steps that you need to take to, to create a product like that, right? There's probably going to be some blending, right? There's probably going to be some heating and cooling and filling and packaging and all of those things, right? All of that, you kind of lump all together. Um, and of course, for, for me, since, you know, I'm the process engineer guy, I kind of get biased into thinking about that. And I kind of forget, right, that there's other things that uh, that the facility needs to do too, right? Like the, the trucks have to come in and drop off the raw materials, and then they have to pick up the finished goods and take them away, right? And you're probably going to have office folks that are separate from the manufacturing folks, right? Uh, and you need break rooms, right? Um, um, and all of those things. So uh, as, you, as you're planning out this uh, facility, you've got to take into account all of these different functions, right, and make sure you have them all listed out here. Uh, of course, one step on top of that is the layout, right? So how are you going to arrange all of these functions, right? What are the workflows, right? Um, and here, um, some people, you know, think about it in more spatial terms, right? So if you have a, a engineering design firm on your side, you know, this is probably where they'll, they'll start, you know, drawing those blueprints, right? Or those 3D models these days as things are more technologically advanced. And so that can help you imagine how you want the workflow to go, right? Where where is the materials coming in? How are they being processed? What is the journey as they take uh, going uh, out to finish goods? Right. Um, uh, for myself, I, I'm fascinated by the by that uh, TV show, uh, How Things Work, right? Um, or all the engineering shows, and you kind of get a peek into the view of factories and see how things move around. Um, and it's really, really fascinating for me. So, so layout is is pretty pretty uh, important uh, because I myself am on the the factory floor a lot as well, and so being in that environment. You know, I know the things that bother me, right? And, I, and, and as every time I, I get to design a new one, I kind of try and fix that little thing that was annoying to me, right? Uh, see if we can do it better. Um, of course, layout is, is really important to, um, um, you know, not just the insides, but also think of the outsides, right? Like, where is it going to be placed, right? Uh, probably in your city, you have, you know, specific zones, right? Where, where, where facilities like this can be, can be placed, right? And, and often it, it has to drop into existing infrastructure, right? Otherwise, it's going to cost you a lot of money, right? You have to think about plumbing and sewage and electrical, um, HVAC, all of those things, right? Um, to make sure that your building can do the things it needs to do, right? So, so these these portions are are very very important. Um, like I said, you don't need too much detail at this stage, but those big blocks need to be in place so that um, you know when you go around to the city planners and things like that, everybody says, "Oh yeah, I can see that. Imagine that that is going to work there." Um, one thing I would point out here is. Um, more than likely, many of us don't have the option to like say, oh, I've got an empty piece of land out there and I can do whatever I want, right? Quite often, we are going to be uh, taking over something, right? A plot of land that was built on before, uh, maybe it already has some existing uh, structures on there, right? Um, and, and building uh, our new thing into that. So, so that's, uh, that's really something to think about. And then five and six is really just to help, uh, you know, turn that into an action plan, so to speak, right? So options, we're going to create, you know, uh, weighted priority matrices, right, to help us evaluate all of our designs and ideas, right? Um, because what we want to do is, is test the merit of each of those, right? And so you're going to have perspectives from a whole whole um, bunch of different people, right? From finance people to these engineers, right, to, to everybody else, right? The, there's just a whole bunch of different perspectives. And you want to get all of that in there, so you're going to end up with very many options. What you want to be able to do here is find the um, base option and then the alternates, right? And then from that, you'll be able to say, okay, here's the winner. Let's create our plan, right? Uh, this is involves, you know, um, the Gantt charts, right? The critical paths, the milestones, all of those things, right? 
So, so this is, um, you know, kind of a, a slide I spend a lot of time on because I think it's so important to make sure that you have all of these in place before you move any further. All right, so uh, let us do that. Um, basically, this is uh, kind of the, the time flow, I guess. So I've categorized them into planning actions and then the executing actions, right? So uh, what I've just described in the last guide really was like feasibility, right? Can we do it? And then at the, at the top of that staircase, we were in planning, right? And that's we're going to roll straight into the conceptual design, right? From there, we go to basic design, then the really detailed design, right? And, and basically, right when you're popping out of this, this is, this is the, the design you're handing off to the planners to get your permits, to the construction um, company that you've selected, right? And, and from here on out, it's all about, you know, just, just building the thing and getting it up and getting it up and running. So, so let's kind of do some some of those details. So what does feasibility look like, right? So our inputs here are going to be financial, economic, operational, and then I just put a catch-all other, right? Um, the idea uh, for each one of these bullet points is really to, you know, do a survey out there, get comparisons, get benchmarks, right? Um, probably somebody has done something similar to what you want to do, right? And so here you're, you're kind of like uh, checking yourself, right? Uh, to make sure that um, your plan is is solid, right? It's it's not too crazy, you know, uh, in timeline, in finances, things like that, right? So um, this is kind of like the final check check to make sure you really want to commit to your project, right? And so that's what I put there as the output, right? Uh, once you complete all of these checks, uh, you know, you're committed on the way. And and once we're on the way, uh, this is the part where I get really excited because, you know, I'm a, I'm a doer, right? And so here's all the things that I'm really interested in doing. So conceptual design, right? Um, uh, I've, I've kind of put, put four bullet points here. Location, right? This is where we do all of our analyses. Um, uh, a lot of them these days is environmental analysis, right? Transportation and infrastructure, right? Like I mentioned uh, in a couple slides ago, right? Just making sure that you don't have to, you know, redig up the ground and lay in new things all the time, right? So, so, so this is this is super duper important here um, with location. Number two, operational workflow. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, most of your process engineers and, and other guys like that will be able to say, oh, here's what it looks like from start to finish, right? From from receiving the raw inputs to to the taking out the, the finished goods, right? And then sort of a conceptual layout design, right? This is this is pretty, um, this is kind of like the first stage of all of those drawings, right? So your floor plans, the structural, the mechanical, electrical, et cetera, all of that stuff. You're just, just trying to make sure like um, the facility you're building can support the main, um, you know, all protein process or whatever you want inside there. And then a good rule of thumb, you know, number four is, is to make sure your financial estimates, right, are, are plus or minus 50% here. Um, now, now I, you know, this next phase, which is basic design, you probably one of your questions is going to be, how do you know when you've crossed over from, from conceptual to basic, like where's that transition point? And, and I'll be honest with you, it's, it's not super clearly defined, right? Um, it's just kind of when you reach the end of, of, of the things that you, you know, were working on that to-do list and, and you find out that you have additional questions, right? You're digging digging deeper and you're like, oh, I have more things I need to figure out, right? Um, and so this is this is kind of that next level where we start, where we start talking about those things, right? So over here in, in number one for structural and finishes, right, you, you kind of want to be able to separate those, those high care areas from those low care areas, right? So what does controlled access look like, right? Where is it the food that we're, you know, uh, working on that needs to be very uh, carefully controlled, uh, you know, for safety reasons, right? Um, versus, you know, I don't know, the maintenance area or the utility area or the offices, right? So, so those are the things to start thinking about here, how you want to divide them up, right? Uh, number two, that operational workflow again, right? We're going to start getting super detailed now, right? From our block flow diagrams to our process flow diagrams to our piping and instrumentation diagrams to everything else out there right like this is where we start filling in all of those things right um uh and this is this is the one where i have a lot of fun with the architects right and the designers and we've got our little models you know uh, 2d models that we're dropping into place on on that blueprint right and saying oh here's where everything is going uh this is this is pretty fun right i don't know if you played sim city <laughs> as a kid right but i had a lot of fun designing all of these things and so this is where i have a lot of fun number three of course a paramount safety review right 
great. Um, not only do we want to be able to like, you know, build things in, in our facility, but we want to make sure we're doing it in a safe manner, right? Uh, I've kind of listed the ones out here in North America because I'm familiar with those, but, but um, you know, every, every country around the world has these ones, right? Um, uh, sort of uh, your, your worker safety, right, OSHA, uh, chemical safety, right, for, for hazardous, um, fire safety, right? Um, all of those things are, are really important to think about um, as you're designing in, right? Because uh, you walk into buildings every day and, and you might you may not notice it or think about it, but it's there, right? From doors that, you know, open outwards from the inside, right? You're always pushing out so you can get out faster to where are the fire alarms, right? Uh, where are the sprinklers? Is there an exit for you in a certain number of feet, right? To get out of that uh, if you have an emergency situation, right? So all of this is planned in as well. And then number four here is where we start to say, oh, if we've got to fill in that building, what are we looking at, right? Major equipment, uh, the utilities, all the, the budgetary quotes that you get from all of the vendors, et cetera, right? And once again, your financial estimates are getting even tighter here. Uh, of course, we'll move into detailed design, more of the same, right? Except now you've got really exact drawings, you've got really exact 3D models, right? You've got all your quotes updated and all of the lead times. You've engaged with your construction company and you're um, issuing work packages. You're issuing the permits, the city, all of that stuff, right? Um, and then you've got really, really tight estimates here on, on where things are going. Right. This is this is probably the, the 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 thing. Right. This is the final stage. Right. And everybody's like, okay, we're ready to start. Um, and and you've committed serious resources into the design at this point. Right. So this is you know that final stage where where everything is going to get tied up as much as it can. Right. There's always things that are going to be missing here or there. Um, you know, over here in, in California, I deal with the power company. Right. And and uh, you know you've probably heard the horror stories with PG and E. Um, and so you know. There's always things like that that are going to crop up, but um, this is this is kind of where you know we're we're pretty sure of what it is that we're going to do, and now we're going to do it, right? Okay, so that was kind of the very high level sort of conceptual parts of this. Now I'm going to take that and translate that into an example here for what is what, what does that look like? So in, in this example, you know, typically what's going to happen, like we said, you have the overall goal. They say, hey, make us a factory that, you know, produces this kind of product, right? Uh, and here's the, uh, you know, uh, volume, uh, annual volume for that or monthly volume for that, right? So you'll take that and then your goal is to drill it down to hourly processing, right? Um, because when you think about it, you know, this is when the workers will clock in and clock out for that shift, right? And so you really want to know what, what can be made in that hour. Uh, and so I have two tables here, right? Uh, the calculation table on the left, and then sort of all of my assumptions on the right side, right? So I'll run through this with you very quickly. So whatever our product is, we don't know, but we know we want to sell 50 tons of it monthly. All right, so uh, we need to do some conversions now. What is a ton? 1,000 kg. I tend to think in pallets and truckloads, right? Because that's the shipping and receiving area of my facility, right? So um, I, I put these ones in here, this, um, this, this unit converter in here. Um, work days in a month, you know, on average, there's about 22 of those. Um, work hours and sanitation hours in that day, right? Here, I've kind of assumed a, you know, a two shift, uh, you know, a two, two, two production shifts and then, you know, one, one sanitation shift in here, right? So we take all of these assumptions and like I said, we just start doing some math here, right? So what is the kg per month, per day, per hour? And this is the, the number that you're really interested in, right? Because here's where you're going to start being able to say, ah, that's what my batch size is. That's what my throughput is, is need to be in, right? And then you can start matching up your equipment. So um, keep in mind here, this is what we've settled on in order to produce 50 tons monthly, right, or 50 tons over 22 days, I need to be doing at least 126 kg per hour. Okay, so we've got this out of the way, and this was a relatively simple example, right? But you can imagine it gets more complicated, right? Because you'll be breaking this down into the SKUs that you have, right? So what is what is it for SKU number one, for number two, for number three, et cetera, right? And you can see how these are going to spread out into all the different lines that you need to, to plan for. So it kind of looks like a simple example, but there's always ability to drill down even, even to more details. All right, so now that we have a rough idea of this batch size for our hourly throughput, what does our process look like? So I have, you know, some made up uh, product here. 
And um, what you do is you kind of just drop in your block flow diagram, right? What are those big unit operations that you, you need? And, and this is um, to understand kind of the flow, right? So we'll probably need to blend some things and homogenize some things, and we've got to pasteurize them and cool them and fill them, right? The idea here is to is is to the way I think about it is like oh what are the machines that I need to do each one of these steps right and then how am I going to arrange it inside my facility right typically we like to be fairly linear right because it, it it'll pass all the way through at least in high volume manufacturing you want it to be passing all the way through right so the key here is just to make sure you know what your blocks are don't forget anything these are the main ones right but I've left off other things like cleaning and sanitation um, delay storage all of those things you'll be able to add all you know more detail to this but this is like a very basic one okay so with that um, now we're going to turn that into a functional diagram right um, and the functional diagram just tells you you know like I said you're gonna start categorizing those operations right and so what you can see is I've, I've kind of color-coded it here you know um, personnel utilities basic care, medium care, high care, right? So obviously this is where the, the main food package process uh, occurs, right? And so this is, you know, uh, under the most scrutiny, right? Um, you know, probably you're familiar with, with like you need to certify your facility, you know, for GFSI, right? And this is where all of those rules sort of come into play, right? Um, so uh, this is just to get a good idea of what's gonna be re required in each one, right? And now that I know this, um, I can actually start selecting some of my equipment, right? So I'm going to be combining all of those things in the last three slides, my hourly throughput, right? Then I'm going to know which equipments I need because I have my, my block diagram, right? Each one of those unit operations. And then I sort of know like what kind of, of, of a level of care each one of those needs, right? Um, are they going to be like aseptic or are they not, right? And so as you start talking to vendors, then, you know, you know your batch size, so you'll be able to say, hey, I, I'm imagining I want this kind of throughput. Tell me all of the utility requirements that I'm going to need to make this machine function. You know, give me these kind of uh, uh, key pieces of information here, right, so that I can hand all of this stuff to my architects and designers, and, and we can start, you know, plugging them in and seeing what it looks like, right? Because what it looks like is you want to end up here, that preliminary layout, right? And you can see now, once you have all of that info, you can um, drag and drop those things and start, you know, filling it in where you want to fill it in. So um, I know this is kind of a high-level example, but I wanted to leave plenty of time for questions. 